thought we'd do something a little light and funny. Good morning and Merry Christmas. Today is actually Christmas Day. That doesn't happen very often, does it? And so what a special honor to be able to worship Christ on his birthday. So we're glad you're here this morning. Uh, We're glad to have guests. Some of you brought your family with you. We're glad you're here today with us. And uh, thank you for being at Farley Street Baptist Church. Now, on your way out, there's, there's supposed to be a cookie for everyone. So don't forget to get your cookie when you leave. Now, next week, we're going to be starting a new series called Pathway to Christ. 
and I'm so excited about it. We're going to be going through the whole Bible. We're going to go do an overview of every chapter, and we're going to see Christ in every book of the Bible. Because you know the Bible's about Christ, right? All of it. And so we're going to walk with Christ next year, and uh, I'm excited about that. All right, this morning, or th- th- for Christmas, our theme has been... The wonder of Christmas. And first of all, we saw the wonder of the angels, how they are just in wonder that God would love us so much that he would leave the glories of heaven and come to earth to be born for us. And then we saw the wonder of the prophets, how they prophesied and gave this wonderful promise, and God kept that promise on Christmas Day when he was born. And then third, we saw the Apostle Paul. And he was in wonder of Christmas because he said he was the chief of sinners. And he was in wonder that God would care enough to send his son to be born at the fullness of time and, and to die for uh, someone like the Apostle Paul, a sinner like him. But we can also agree with that, right? Because we're all sinners. And so we stand in awe and wonder that God would do that. Well, today we're gonna look at the wonder of the shepherds. Why the shepherds? Of all the people that he could have introduced to, why the shepherds? But what we want to do right now is we want to invite the children up. So all the children come up. And I've got a gift for you kids if you come up. So I want to bribe you this morning. Come on up. And we're going to read the Christmas story together. Just come on up and sit right up here among us. And we're going to read the Christmas story together. And then, like I said, we got a small gift we want to give you afterwards. And then, of course, we're, we have to sing happy birthday to Jesus, right? It's his birthday. All right, so here's the scripture. Luke chapter 2, beginning with verse 8. This is the story of Jesus coming. All right, here we go. Now, there were in the same country shepherds. Well, let's all stand. Sorry. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with an angel, a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. And so it was when the angel... See this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning the child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told to them by the shepherds. But Mary kept these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying God and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. All right, now we've got a cookie for Jesus this year. Where is Shauna? All right. Nope, he's, Aaron's getting it. This says, happy birthday, Jesus. And when you have a birthday, you all, you usually have a cake or something. So let's sing happy birthday to Jesus, all right? Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Jesus, happy birthday to you. Amen. Good. Let's give these kids a big hand and they do a great job. All right. Hey, we want all of you to take a gift and then you can go and be seated. All right. Thank you for coming up here. All right. All right, when you, get your, when you get your gift, you can go on back, okay? Here you go, Anna. There you go. Here you go. Right here. For her. Here you go. 
All right, everybody get one? Okay, you can go sit with your mom and daddy now, okay? Ready? It is such a special privilege, a special honor to be here today on Christmas Day. And so we cannot thank you enough from the bottom of our hearts, with all of our soul, with all of our minds, all of our strength this morning, we wanna say thank you. Thank you for sending your son to be born, to become a human and to live a life without sin for us. Thank you for this wonderful gift. And it's our prayer this morning that there's someone here and they've never received that gift today, they would make that choice to choose you. And then Lord, today this building is full of people who've made that choice. They have received you and our hearts are overflowing with joy and thankfulness. And so again, thank you so much. We love you. We ask all this in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. You may be seated. We're talking about the wonders, uh, the wonder of the shepherds. Luke 2, 8 says, Now they were in the same country, shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Just a question for you, who doesn't like birthday parties? Anybody? Now, look, as a grown-up, you don't have to, you might have stopped celebrating your birthday, that's okay. But I want you to think back to whenever you were a child or maybe something that you did for one of your children, uh, a big birthday celebration that if you could have invited anybody that you wanted to, who would it be? Maybe it would be somebody who was famous. Maybe it would be a celebrity, your favorite actor or actress. We got to watch It's a Wonderful Life last night, and I love Jimmy Stewart. I would have been inviting him. He is one of my favorites. I heard an amen. All right. Maybe it would be a president, a politician, maybe even a famous preacher, somebody who was royalty. But if you could invite anybody that you wanted to to your birthday, and let's just say it's the biggest birthday event of your life. And in fact, when we're thinking about Christmas, it is the biggest birthday the world has ever known. Who would you invite? Well, I heard somebody say, Jesus, that's a Sunday school answer, all right? But you would probably, listen, if, you're in, if you are at the birthday party of the eternal Son of God, you would want to invite the biggest names. You would invite the showstoppers, the, the most famous people that you know. Everybody who is anybody, that's who you would invite but that's not what God did. God did not send out the world to the most famous people. He sent out the world, he sent out the word into the world to people who were nobodies, the shepherds. He invited people that nobody else would have invited to their birthday party. People did not want shepherds at their gatherings. It was a hard job, it was a thankless job, it was a stinky job. People did not want to have smelly shepherds at their birthday parties. And even more than that, in that day, shepherds were not trustworthy at all, or at least they were not trusted by most people. They were not even trusted enough to be able to give testimony in court. They were considered to be dishonest. They were considered to lack integrity. And it was so questionable that they would not even let them testify in court. Shepherds were the ones who were the outcast of that society, the people that you and I sometimes might drive by on the road and wonder, how did they get there? Well, that's the way people felt about shepherds. So if you lived then, the shepherds would have been the last people that you would have invited to your birthday party. No respectable person would have invited the shepherds to their birthday party, much less would you have invited them to the birth of your child but that's what God did. And when God invited the shepherds to come to Jesus, God was showing us that we can come too. That it does not matter if you are a nobody to the world, you are a somebody to God. 
And so the wonder of Christmas is that God chose the shepherds to hear the good news of Jesus. And because God chose them to hear the good news, guess what? He has chosen you and I to hear the good news of Christmas. All right, good morning. Merry Christmas. That's right. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quickly talk right here about how Jesus meets us right where we are, um, because if you take a look, I think actually one of the biggest and uh, like ultimately one of the biggest common misconceptions that we have uh, in, in the Christian community and culture today is that you have to get right with God before you can even go to him, before you can receive him, before you can accept him, before you can get forgiveness from him, is that you have to be in right standing. You have to be a good, upstanding, moral person, all of this. This is a misconception that is often pushed by our culture today. And I wanna put it, like, I just wanna, I wanna say it right now, it's false. That's not true. If anyone's telling you you need to get right before you go to God, that's false teaching. That's, that's not cool, okay? Um, if you take a look in uh, Luke chapter two, verse eight, man, it says uh, the latter portion and uh, like part B of that is keeping a watch over their flock by night, the shepherds out in the field. Now, the angel came to them in the field, right? So they met the shepherds. Now, as Jeremy had kind of just previously talked about, Jeremy had said that the shepherds weren't anybody cool, right? The shepherds are not celebrities. They're not royalty. They're not like people you'd invite to your birthday party. They're just not those types of people. Yet Jesus wanted to meet them exactly where they were. And so that is exactly what he did. And so I think that's a very much a big encouragement for us as well, is that we don't have to get right before God before we can go to him, right? He's already coming to us. He's already pursuing us because he wants that in-depth, personal, and intimate relationship with him so much that he literally gave his son for us, the birth of our Savior, so that we could have that relationship with him and be saved. And so, like I said, it is, uh, it is not for us to make it right before we can go to God. That's the misconception. It is for Christ who sanctifies us because we are saved by uh, grace through the faith that we have placed in Jesus Christ, and that is it, that, that's it. We don't have to get right, God can handle that. We don't need to handle that, let God handle that. That's it, that's all I got. So, Merry Christmas. is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping whom angels greet with anthems sweet while shepherds watch our keeping this this is Christ the King whom shepherds guard and the babe the 
Sent them out. But you know, no one received a greater invitation than the shepherds did, didn't they? I mean, imagine this glorious angel, this powerful angel standing before you and telling you the great news. And then a whole host joins and they are just singing so beautiful. It must have been overwhelming. The scripture says, then the angel said to them, do not be afraid for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. So the shepherds were given an invitation to not be afraid. You ever thought about that? To not be afraid? Well, uh, I don't know if any of you have ever been summoned to the principal's office when you were in school. I was when I was in third grade. I remember being so scared, you know, and a few years ago, the, uh, Uh, Hallmark put out a a commercial about this little girl and she's been summoned to the principal's office and evidently she had been there before and she was scared and they got her muttering um, under her breath, I haven't done anything recently. Why am I in trouble again? I'm go- if I find out who tur- turned me in, I'm going to get them. And she's just muttering as she gets there and she's scared and nervous. She walks into the principal's office and the principal has a big smile on her face and she says, sit down. And she sits down and she hands her a Hallmark card. So she was being congratulated, not in trouble. And so when Jesus came, he came, the scripture says that he came not to condemn us, but to save us. And that's the mystery, isn't it? I mean, and so uh, we love that scripture, uh, John 3.16, don't we? And I think on Christmas Day, we should say it together, right? John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But then there's verse 17. And we often forget about this verse that follows the greatest verse in the Bible. Verse 17 says, For God did not send his son of the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Sometimes our guilty conscience of our sin causes us to think the worst, doesn't it? The shepherds learn that not only do they not have to be afraid, but also that the, she- that the angel was bringing not bad tidings, and they weren't in trouble, but they- he was bringing them good tidings. And so he says, behold, good tidings. Uh, during World War II, there was a, there was a couple that-, that immigrated over to America, And uh, they were learning the customs and the different things, but they had received an invitation from one of their new neighbors uh, that they had met and known for a few months, and the daughter was getting married, and they received an invitation. And they were reading, and they were very honored and so glad they had got it. But at the very end, it had those letters, RSVP. And they did not know what that, that meant. And so he says to his wife, he says in his Eastern European accent, the husband says, wife, what does it mean? And uh, uh, so they thought for a while, thought for a while, and finally he figured out what it was or what he thought it was. And he says, wife, I know what it means. Remember sin vetting presents. Well, he got mixed up, didn't he? And some people get that mixed up about Christmas and about Christ and about Christianity. They think that they're supposed to do some good works. They think they're supposed to earn their salvation and do something to try to make it. And so uh, like that couple, they thought it was a demand that they bring a gift. But Christmas is not about bringing a gift. Christmas is about receiving a gift. And that's what the shepherds needed to to learn. And Paul says in, in Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, for by grace have you been saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is the, it's the gift of God not of works, lest anyone should boast. And so the shepherds were given an invitation to have great joy, to be really excited and be really happy. And so everything else in your life, in the world, that's going on in the world or in your life may be a mess. Things may not be like they, like you would want them, but the God of heaven invites you in spite of all that to know him, to be loved by him and to receive him. And the old hymn says, let every heart prepare him room. And that's what the shepherds did. They prepared room that night for God. And they received the angel's message and they went to Bethlehem and they found the babe. And they got to worship him and they got to 
uh, see him, they got to know him, and they, then they left sharing the great news. So I wonder, will you rejoice today? Will you receive the great news? The angels declared that this good tidings was not just for them, but it was for all people. Now imagine that. Have you ever received an invitation and it invited you and at the very end it said, oh, and by the way, this is for all people? You probably haven't, have you? Because usually when you receive a personal invitation like that, it's just for you and just maybe your family. And, uh, but the shepherds received this invitation and said, no, this is for everybody. You can invite anybody else you want to come and be a part of that. Uh, you know, after my sister's graduation, about a year later, uh, her uh, boyfriend asked her to marry her and she's going to get married. And so they're going to do invitations again. And yes, she asked me again if I would help her with the invitations. And of course, I helped her even though I knew I wasn't getting one. And she left and she went back to, uh, uh, she lived in an apartment with her girlfriend. And, and uh, that night when I went to bed, I pulled my uh, covers down and there was an invitation on the pillow with a little note. It says, Richard, you will be one of my most special guests. And it feel great to belong. Isn't it wonderful to say, you're invited, I want you there. And that's what God did for us. It's a great feeling to be included. And I want you to know that Jesus invites you to be included. He invites you to not be afraid because he did not come to condemn you, to, 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 to uh, knock you down. Some people think of God like that, that God just hates them and wants to knock them down. But he didn't come to condemn you. Condemn you. He came to save you. And then he invites you to receive Christ of Christmas. It's not something you have to earn and you don't have to bring a gift. You, you, you need to receive the gift. And then he invites you to rejoice with great joy because he really, really does want you to know him. So I, just real quick, I want to share with you how you become a Christian, how you start this journey. And the first thing you do, and we call it the ABCs, A is you become authentic. You become real and honest with God. You say, God, I know I'm a sinner I know I've messed up. I'm not worthy to be saved. And you just come admitting your sin and say, God, I'm a sinner. And, and you repent and you turn from that sin and you say, God, I know that. But the second thing is then you believe. And believe means that we believe that Jesus, what we're celebrating today is that Jesus is God. That he came from heaven and he lived a life without sin. He died on that cross. He rose again on the third day. We believe we believe in Jesus Christ. And then third is C, you confess. You confess, you call upon him and say, God, I want to invite you into my heart. And this morning, you could pray a prayer, a simple prayer that says, God, I know I'm a sinner and I ask you to forgive me of my sin and I invite you to come into my heart. I receive you. Just like the shepherds received Christ that day, you can receive Christ this morning on this Christmas morn. And we invite you to do that. Then I want to say to all of you who've already received this wonderful gift, I want to re remind you of a story. In Luke chapter 10, Jesus has sent the disciples, the 70, out two by two. And they went out. And when they came back, they were so excited because every time they would pray in Jesus' name or do something, a miracle would happen. And they were so excited. They came back. You're not going to believe what we were able to do in the name of Jesus. And Jesus stops him and says, no, 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 no. You're missing the big thing here. You're missing the big point here. It's not that you could do a miracle in my name. The big thing that you need to be excited about, the thing that you really need to rejoice about is that your name is written in heaven's. Your name is written in heaven's book because you've been saved. And I want to remind every believer here this morning, there's a lot of things to rejoice about at Christmas, but the greatest thing that we should be excited about and we should rejoice about is that our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's it. Would you pray with me? With every head bowed and every eye closed. If you're here and you've never received Christ as your Savior, this morning we want to invite you to receive Christ as your Savior. And right now you can pray this prayer. Heavenly Father, right now we come to you and we know that we are sinners and we have fallen short of your glory. And I pray if there's anyone here this morning they've never received Christ as their Savior this morning, they would admit that they're a sinner. And then, Heavenly Father, this morning, we do believe, we believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God. Come in human form to save us. 
And I pray if there's someone here and they've never placed their trust in you, instead of trusting in themselves, of trying to be good enough, hoping they make it to heaven, I pray this morning they will believe on you right now. They'll put all their trust, all their faith in you. And then this morning, Lord, we call upon you. And I pray if there's someone here that, that right now in their prayer, they will just call upon you to come into their heart, forgive them and save them. And thank you, God, for answering that prayer. And then, God, this morning, we want to rejoice because our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Merry Christmas to us because you sent a gift that's the greatest gift of all. And again, from the bottom of our hearts, we say thank you. Thank you so much for saving us. And we ask all this in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. All right, at this time, we're going to have our candlelight service. I'm gonna ask the staff to come back up, our pastors and wives, and, and, then, and let's all stand together. And here's what we're gonna do. Nathan's gonna play a song and we're going to, this middle candle represents Jesus Christ and we're gonna light that and then we're gonna come down the end of the aisles. We're gonna light and then you light each other's as you uh, can. And then uh, when all the lights are lit, the staff is gonna come back down here and we're gonna sing Silent Night, a cappella, and then we'll dismiss our service. Silent night together. Let's sing together, Silent Night.
Love you. Glad to be your pastor and your friend, and we all love you. You are dismissed. Amen.